Double Down was a 2005 sci-fi exploration film starring, directed, and produced by cult sensation Neil Breen. Let's see what Wrestling Guy Nodakun had to say about this film. You know, they say once every generation someone comes along so clever, so ahead of their time, so experimental, that they completely reshape the way that we view not even media, but just life itself. Neil Breen is not one of these people. This is a convoluted, boring, long mess of a film. I am not really into the whole Neil Breen mania that appears to be running Wild Brother, where he has filmings the same way Tommy Wiseau does for The Room. You know, haha, it's so funny because it's bad, but this is just boring. So he's, most of his films take place in Nevada, it's in a desert, and he's some sort of computer hacker. And right away, he's gotta learn how fucking sound mixing works because the music, just cuts. And sometimes his dialogue cuts with it. So he'll be saying something or yelling and you don't hear it. So I, so he's like, he's, his girlfriend who apparently did not want to do a nude scene got shot and killed in a pool. And it's all very tragic, even though I don't even think we know who she is, where she came from, why they're in love with their most dispassionate kisses you've ever seen in your life. She dies. And he uh, wanders around in the desert with his computers eating nothing but tuna while well, wearing a lot of tuna. And uh, he basically goes around threatening U.S. governments. He erects a force field that kills a guy somehow with the power of technology. I don't think that's ever actually explained until so you know what? I'm not going to explain it either. Anyway, afterwards, he just kind of wanders around in the desert for a while and he keeps seeing visions of his dead girlfriend. This woman who dies in the first 20 minutes of this film is probably the, se the character who's in this the most, aside from the main character. He's carrying her off, and then he's not. She's a kid, and then she isn't. He's, he's dragging her dead body around like he's fucking Ted Bundy. It's creepy <laughs> as fuck. And nothing happens. I'm sorry, this isn't one of those fun films. It's just boring. Nothing really happens. The acting is stilted. The sound mixing is terrible. And it's just not a good film. I apologize. I can't get on the brain train thus far. So, I mean, when I found out about Neil Breen, I was kind of excited because, you know, here at What A Story Productions, we're kind of a big fan of, you know, Tommy Wiseau. And I thought that Neil Breen would be on another level, quite like Tommy. And we would sit here quoting Neil Breen all the time. But here's the thing. When it comes to Tommy, you know, it was funny in an ironic way. In an ironic way uh, this is just not... Uh, there's nothing really redeemable about this at all. Uh, just as Wrestling Guy mentioned, you know, the sound m mixing is terrible. Uh, when it first happened, uh, and it was only a couple minutes in, we thought that there was a problem with what we had found. So we ended up trying to find something else to see maybe if it was just like the version of this movie that we had got uh and the answer is no that's that's just how bad it really is it just cuts out and then it, it it's not even like there's ambiance for us to fall back on it's just dead zero audio it's as quiet as this nothing like <laughs> I, I, I can't get that. Um, obviously, he likes Nevada because he spends a whole lot of time in the desert and in Las Vegas. Uh, what else is there to say? Uh, he's got this weird kind of thing going back and forth about them being kids and then them being in love and then them being dead. Uh, I don't get that. Um, as he mentioned, you know, for a dead woman, she sure spends a lot of screen time with Daniil. Uh, Neil's acting is absolutely just terrible. It's so wooden. Uh, his character is the most perfect, awesome, best hacker ever uh, who can break into anything because it's super easy. Um, it also seems like he's also a bad guy. And so like there's a huge kind of undercurrent. And I think that it was supposed to be the main plot, but because of all this other convoluted stuff that's also happening, and not to mention all the, the stock footage that he also inserts here, it's kind of hard to follow any kind of plot. But there's a lot of talk about chemical weapons and biological weaponry uh, and terrorism and stuff like that. Um, and it seems like Neil Breen, even though he's working with like the government, FBI, CIA, shady government, whatevers, uh, is also setting up a giant terror attack with these biochemical things, um, and going to attack the Las Vegas Strip, uh, which in the end, I suppose, accumulates, uh, culminates, sorry, inside this, uh, this four person 
just straight on shot of people he says are the CIA, FBI, a senator, and <laughs> and <laughs> yeah, these guys, and they're all like, "We should move to Code Orange. We should move to Code Red. Move to Code Red. Move to Code Red." We should think about evacuating the Las Vegas Strip. Evacuate the hotels on the Las Vegas Strip. And that's what happens. It was, and it, he does, it, okay, I don't like getting into technical stuff. This is not interesting for you guys, but I mean, when you're doing a dialogue scene where there's two people talking, what you generally should do is have an over-the-shoulder shot or at least an interesting shot that shows the other in person so you kind of have an idea. Uh, over the shoulders work best because you are kind of, you're able to look at the person who is talking in the face and then do a reverse shot so you know where everybody is. You have the feeling for the space of where the camera is. What Neil's idea of a good dialogue scene is, is to shoot a direct on medium angle of the one person and don't include any of the stuff you've already included in your establishing shot in the background so it's not like you can continually place them in space. Uh, and then cut to another medium shot with no one else in frame of the other person that's talking. Uh, and all of them are low angled, so basically all you see around them is sky. It's just a bizarre shot, and for no reason whatsoever. Um, now, I may have a reason as to why it's done that way. Um, I have a feeling that most of the shots that they were doing, especially considering there was a couple of shots where they were downtown Las Vegas, they couldn't actually do a whole lot of good audio downtown. Um, so what they did was they went back to the desert where it was nice and quiet, and then they did those medium shots and then put them up against the blue sky. So you can record all the audio you want, do the shots you want, and then just put it into that scene because you don't have to worry about the backgrounds not matching up. But that's ridiculous. People don't make films that way. Anyway, I've gone on long enough. This movie was ridiculous. <laughs> what a story, Mark. 